canvas in two or three different places, and you should be able to see your fingerprint very clearly. See how I can still see all the little grooves in my fingerprint? That's what you, that's what you want. You've got just the right amount of liquid white on if you've done that. So let me just say again to everybody, welcome to our big TwitchCon Bob Ross Paint Along. Thank you guys for coming. We appreciate you very much. We hope you have a happy little experience. And if you're just joining us on the stream, we already have our canvas wet, slick, and ready to go. We have a thin, even coating of liquid white on the canvas. Liquid white. And we used our large brush for that. We used our large brush, and I still have a little bit of liquid white left in that large brush. And I'm actually just going to come up to a little bit of this color that's called CY, cadmium yellow. I'm going I'm to sneak up to the cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to tap a little bit into my brush like this. I'll come up, I'll come from the pile and just sort of drag a little bit of color down and just tap the brush into that like that. Tap, tap, tap. Turn it over, tap, tap, tap. There we go. No big chunks of paint. And I'll bring that up to the canvas. And just right through the middle, just right through the middle, I'm going to use a crisscross stroke. Sort of like a, it's sort of like a figure of eight. Bob says crisscross stroke. I just put my brush on there and I keep, I keep working it back and forth. Little crisscross strokes. If you want it to be a little brighter, you can go back and pick up more paint. I try to, I try to just play it safe and use a little bit at a time, see how it's going to look. There we go. Actually, I should say, there. That's my favorite part of Bob's stream when he says, there. I get goosebumps when he goes, there. There's a little more here. I'm not worried about that being in a real confined area. I just sort of let my brush walk all over. See how neat and careful you have to be when you do this? Just be really, really careful. So as, as I understand it, we're being streamed on twitch.tv slash twitch presents. So if you want to share this on your channel, please, please do that. Please host us on your channel. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. You'll have witnesses. I painted like Bob. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you want to, I was just reminded, if you want to tell your friends too, if they're afraid of like coming in late, like they forgot or something, tell them to come on. We've got people here to catch them up. We've got people here to catch them up. We'll get them on track. I know it takes a while to get through the lines out there. It's a little bit crowded. But tell them to come on. We'll catch them up. 
I'm going to tap my brush. It's still dirty. I haven't cleaned it. I will, though. You don't have to, but I'm going to clean it just so the people watching can watch the devil get beaten. Yeah. You don't have to, though. But I'm going to take a little bit of a lizard in crimson, tap it into the brush. Let's come up here. Just above the yellow, just above the yellow. Again, little crisscross strokes. You can see it a little better with the crimson. Little crisscross strokes, kind of a figure of eight. Matrix, you're late. <laughs> See, be, be glad I don't know everybody's name. I'll call you out. A little bit of crimson. There we go. There. I'm going to teach you how to paint lazy today so you don't have to wash your brush so often. I'm going to teach you the lazy man's way of painting. I've perfected it. I know, I know what you like. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come on in. Come join us in the land of happy little trees. Welcome, welcome. I do something a little bit different in the water. I do, I do crisscross strokes. Bob usually uses crisscross strokes in the sky like this. In the water, we want water, normally water's level. Even if it's choppy, it's still kind of level. So I'm going to take just a touch more. Whoa, sorry, I'm bumping around too much here. I'm going to take just a little bit more crimson, and again, I'm just going to tap it into the brush, get a little on both sides, and tap it into the brush like that. And then we're going to come down to the lower portion of the canvas. This is going to be water eventually. And I'm just going to come from the bottom corner in, and then sort of lift your brush off. It's just like sweeping. It's like sweeping. You put a little pressure out here, and you sweep it in. But I'm going to use level strokes down here. Push and sweep, push and sweep, push and sweep. Just almost up to the middle. Just sort of let it touch, just let it tickle the edge of that yellow a little bit and then stop right there. A little bit of crimson, just level strokes. I'm going to do it from the left side of the canvas like this. Sweeping in, sweeping in, sweeping in. Also from the right. Level strokes, touch it, sweep it into the middle. Touch and sweep, touch and sweep, touch and sweep. Just drag it right in like that. Reload if you need a little more. Don't be afraid of it, don't be afraid of it. Color's pretty. This is, this is how you can be lazy. This is how you can be lazy. You know, Bob usually washes his brush in between applying color, and then, he, and then he washes the brush, and he dries it, and he blends it. What you can do, this is a little cheat. It'll even, it'll even save you some paint. You can just take your brush into your paper towel. I think we gave you paper towels. We were supposed to. If not, if not, just raise your hand. I didn't get paper towels, and we'll bring you some. 
but you can just wipe that brush out wipe off the tip of the brush in a paper towel like that get rid of the get rid of the excess paint and then I can come back and just very gently very gently three hairs and some air you can just brush between where the yellow and the crimson touch and then give it a little give it a little sweep all the way across like this Maybe, maybe wipe your brush out again and I'm going to do the same thing in my water. I'm just going to gently blend that just to get rid of the harsh lines, get rid of the brush strokes, get rid of anything that looks a little wonky. We're going to blend it away. Your good old big brush is good for a lot of stuff. It, it hides all your happy accidents. There we go. Something like that. I'm just getting rid of the harsh lines and harsh brush strokes. That's all we want to do. Hey. So it's getting close to 300 people. Will you give that little bit of love message again? Oh, yes. So let me say again, welcome to everybody that's just coming in and joining us. Welcome to our happy little Twitch class. We're glad to have you here. As you, as you get seated and some of, these, some of these friendly certified Bob Ross instructors come over to help you catch up, we haven't done very much, you haven't missed very much, so that's okay. Don't panic. Don't panic, basket. It's all right. It's all good. If you will, though, as you come into the room, if you're not going to take your painting home with you today and you'd like us to ship it to you when it's dry, there is an envelope tucked in the back side of your canvas. There's a little envelope tucked into the stretcher bar on the back side of your canvas. If you'll pull that out and fill it out with your information, your shipping information, and then we can send that painting home to you when it's dry. You'll need to include, if you're domestic shipping, you'll need to include $8. And international shipping is $20, but we'll be happy to send that to you. Just be sure you do that so you get your painting. We don't want you to do all this work and then not, not get it. It'd be terrible. It'd be ruined. So up, up along the top of the sky and in the, and in the very edges of the water, I'm going to use a little phthalo blue. You guys know that one, right? You know, phthalo blue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap my brush into a little bit of phthalo blue. Tap, tap, tap. Do a little tap on both sides, but not much. Don't get a lot of paint. Start out with just a little. Pull a little out and just tap it into your brush. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. So a little tap, 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 tap. That's phthalo blue, and on your palette, it's labeled PHB. I know that's a f, but it's pronounced f. I don't know why. I just work here. I'm going to start up in the corner. Again, little, little figure of eights, crisscross strokes. Don't cover up all your crimson. Phthalo blue is 100 times as strong as a lizard in crimson, and it will just eat it up like that. So I'm going to be real sneaky careful and I'm just going to kind of dust some of this in along the top of the canvas and I'm going to leave some pink showing, some of the crimson showing. I don't want to kill that, okay? So let's just sort of dust it in there like this. 
I sort of work up in from the corners and along the top, bring it down, bring it down, bring it down, about like so. And I'm just leaving a rough edge down here. That's, that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. Maybe just a little bit more right there. See how much brighter this looks now that we put some dark up top? Isn't that crazy? And then a little bit more, a little more thalo blue. Tap, 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 tap. A little bit on both sides of the brush. I'm gonna start down in the bottom corner of the water. Touch and sweep it in a little, but again, I'm not gonna cover up all the pink. It's so much stronger, so I'm just gonna touch it and sweep it in, touch it and sweep it in, touch it and sweep it in, and leave a little bit of the pink showing. See, if we do it, if we do it that way, it kind of stays bright right in the middle. It sort of looks like light shimmering on that water surface right in the middle. Touch it and sweep, touch it and sweep. Don't cover up all of your crimson, leave a little showing. Sweep, sweep, sweep. There we go, there we go. <clears throat> and, a, and a real quick reminder, I've, I've, already, I've already shared it with some of this side of the room, but some of you haven't heard it. If, you wanna, if you're going to post some pictures of your paintings and share them, would, would you all mind tagging it, Paint Like Bob? That way we can, that way we can check you out. <laughs> we can search you out. We want to see what you did. So we're getting some happy little phthalo blue up here, right? Right? A little bit, a little bit. Your brush just sort of naturally runs out of paint as you put it on there. You're just going to naturally, your brush will become starved for paint as you go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the lazy man's way of painting once more, and I'm just going to wipe that brush out on a paper towel. Wipe it out, wipe it out, wipe it out. You can take out all of the paint that you can get. I just sort of gently wipe it out, tips of the bristles like that. It won't get it totally clean, but it'll get it clean enough for what we're going to do. Wipe it out, wipe it out. And I'm going to once more come up here to where the two colors meet and it's still sort of distinct. There's still, you know, some definite brush strokes there. So I'm just going to use... This time I'm going to use two hairs and some air. And I'm, I'm going to make little crisscross strokes very gently. Two hairs and some air where those two colors meet. And I'm just going to soften that. Soften it, soften it, soften it, soften it. And brush across. And it just blends away all those harsh lines and all those weird brush strokes. Anything that looks a little too stiff or too man-made or lady-made, it gets rid of it. And I'm just going to sweep across very gently again, two hairs and some air. There. Soften it, soften it, soften it. And I'm using the level strokes in the water because I want the water to appear level. The brush strokes will do that for you automatically. And then I'll, I'll give one more little wipe off. You guys can give just your brush one more little wipe off when you get all that done. We're going to get it as clean as we can get it and not worry about it. Um, if you'll indulge me, though, I'm going to clean the brush out so everybody can type Rip Devil in chat, okay? I'll even, I'll even talk everybody at home through the procedure so they, you know, wash it out in the odorless thinner. Shake out the excess. <laughs> and then you just beat the devil out of it. <laughs> that is fun. That is fun. Bob's legit laughing when he does that. It's fun. <laughs> 
But you don't have to do that. I really, I don't want you guys to dip your brush in the paint thinner too much because I'd rather you have a nice, really, really dry brush as opposed to a really, really clean brush that's a little bit wet. Paint thinner can kind of eat the paint off your painting and we don't want that to happen. Your brush will be clean enough, I promise. All right. And now that you're really good and comfortable using a large brush, I'm going to change. I'm gonna, we're going to throw that out the window and we're going to use a fan brush now. <laughs> Happy little fan brush. I'm going to, I'm just going to touch the corner of that brush, that little plate of liquid white that you have. I'm, I'm only going to touch the corner of that brush into my liquid white and pick up just a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm going to come over here to the titanium white, the TW. That, that white is much thicker than the liquid white. And I'm, I'm going to load my brush nice and full of titanium white, and it has just a little touch of the liquid white to soften it down. But load your brush nice and full on both sides. And if you've loaded it correctly, I just sort of wipe one side through, I flip it over, I wipe the other side through. This brush should come to a nice chisel edge. You should have it loaded so full that it just kind of squeezes all of those bristles together and you've got a, you got a nice full load on your brush. And I'm gonna come up here to the top, kind of the top right corner of the painting, somewhere up here. It doesn't, you can put them wherever you want them, that's just where I'm going to put them. And we're going to paint some happy little clouds. Take your, take your brush, turn the handle up in the air just a little bit like that. The, verse, the first part of your brush that touches the canvas is going to be the corner. And I'm going to put the corner on there and just make tiny little circles. Tiny little circles. Keep your brush moving. Once you put it on there, keep your brush moving. You could, if you sort of run out of paint, Flip it over and use the other side, but keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Don't sit still. Don't sit in one place. That's all there is to it. And don't make more of it than there is to it. Just put your brush down and tiny little circles. If you've ever had to like polish something, you know, you have to make really, really tight, tiny little circles if you're going to polish something. It's the same motion. It's just like that. It's just exactly like that. When you do that, you get a really nice, crisp top edge on your clouds. You get a fluffy little top edge on your clouds. The bottom looks kind of weird though, doesn't it? So what I'm gonna do is take my large brush, once I've got this in place, I'm gonna take my large brush, I'm gonna hold it exactly the same way that I held the fan brush. I'm just gonna turn the handle up in the air a little bit so the top corner is the first thing to touch the canvas, just like this. Maybe you can sit there. I'll get my hand out of the way. And I'm very, very gently, I'm just going to kind of tickle that bottom edge. Don't touch the top edge. Don't touch that pretty fluffy top edge. I'm just going to put the, the top corner of the large brush on there and just kind of spin it around in tiny little circles and it blends away the bottom, blends away the bottom, something like that. But leave the top alone. You guys having fun? Good. Good, good. I think Bob would be happy. I think he would.
And if you want to soften down the top of your cloud, you can. Just be extra, extra, extra careful. Really light touch. This is like half a hair and some air. You can just sort of do big, big, really, really gentle crisscross strokes over the top edge of your cloud, but just, just barely touch it. Pretend it's going to explode if you put too much pressure on it. Just barely, barely, barely. Now, if you're happy with one row of clouds, that's perfect. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put two little rows in just so if you want a little refresher, if you want to see it again, or if you got a little confused, I'm going to do another set. What I'm going to do first, however, is I picked, up, I picked up a little bit of color on my fan brush as I was painting my clouds. So I'm just going to come down to my paper towel and I'm going to wipe away that little bit of crimson and blue that I picked up in my brush. I'm going to wipe it out, get rid of it. It's gone. And I'll come back. I'll get just a little touch of the liquid white on the corner of the brush, just as I did before. Come back to the palette. Come back to my titanium white. Load the brush the same way once again. Both sides nice and full. I'll wipe one side of the brush through the titanium white. Flip it over. Wipe the other side through. That way if you run out of paint on one side of the brush, you can flip it over and use the other. That's why they put two sides on brushes. We'll come up here. I'm going to leave a little bit of this darker space underneath the cloud. If you, if you want to, you can, you, can put, you can put two in. But I'm going to leave a little bit of darker space. I'm not going to butt this one right up against that one. And again, I'm going to turn the brush up in the air like this so it's the top corner and make tiny little circles. Just keep your brush moving. Keep your brush moving. If I make tiny little circles and I leave some dark in between, I'll be able to see between the layers like that. And I'm going to call that good on clouds. I think that's all I want. Same procedure for blending, too. Use your large brush. Use the top corner. Tiny little circles to get rid of that weird looking bottom edge. Tiny little circles, tiny little circles. Keep your brush moving. Wipe it off a little and then half a hair and some air and then you just sort of sweep across and blend it. Sweep across and blend it. That's the most gentle touch you can imagine. Softest thing you've ever done in your life, right? There's blending a cloud. Gesundheit. I want to remember this. <laughs> yes.
So if, if anybody's world isn't quite as happy as they'd like it to be, and, and you're having some issues, just keep your, raise your hand and keep it up. We have, we have some of the best CRIs in the nation here with us today, and we need to give them a hand for coming to help. Keep your hand raised, and they're going to come help you because they have been trained and certified in the ways of Bob. Show lots of love. I was just trying to think of some Bob trivia I could share with you. you get, everybody knows that he hated his hair, right? Could you imagine getting talked into getting a perm because it would save you a few dollars? That's how much Bob loved painting. That's how much he wanted to teach other people to paint. He had so little, so little money at that time that he was like, hey, if it'll save a few bucks and I can keep sharing the joy of painting, do it. If it'll save me a few dollars. That's where that came from. We're about to get ruined. <laughs> it's okay, though. We'll save it. We'll save it. <laughs> Hey, you know how I work now. I get you nice and comfortable with, with one brush and then I, change, I throw all that out the window and we do something else. <laughs> so I'm going to, as, as we're kind of finishing up the cloud area, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you an idea of where we're going. If you're not ready, you can just watch. You'll know what to do when you're ready. You can, you can actually be doing this. You don't, you don't have to wait. I'm going to mix a little paint. And just so we all have kind of the same proportions, I'm going to use a weird measurement system, but stick with me. I think it'll make sense. I'm going to come over to phthalo blue here, and I'm going to pick up about a peanut M&M. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to take about a peanut M&M of phthalo blue, and I'm just going to move it down here somewhere away from my other colors. Got a peanut M&M of phthalo blue. I'm going to, which is PHB on your palette, PHB. I'm also going to pick up a peanut M&M of MB, that's midnight black peanut M&M of midnight black and just pile that right on top of the blue. And let's add to that a peanut M&M and maybe throw in a Tic Tac of a lizard in crimson AC. So I've got, I've got PHB MB and AC. 
little more AC than the other two. It's peanut M&M, peanut M&M, and then peanut M&M and a Tic Tac. And when you mix your paint, when you mix your paint, what you're going to do is just sort of scoop it all up on your knife and turn it over and smash it out flat like that. Scoop it all up, turn it over and smash it out flat. Just do that maybe three times and it will be mixed plenty good. We just want sort of a dark purplish color. I think that will do what we want it to do. But I, I really do I really do take the knife and just sort of let me turn where there we go. See how the blade will bend just a little bit? You can you can sort of push down on that paint and drag it out in a in a long straight line. Like that. You gotta make little noises, it helps. And this may be the only time in your life when you're in a room with 300 people making Bob Ross noises, so savor it, okay? <laughs> this doesn't happen every day. Yes, yes. And now I'm going to take, with that color that I made, I'm going to take my palette knife. And I'm, I'm just going to cut across... and pick up a fine little roll of paint on my knife like that. And you have to sort of flash it around like Bob does to show how big it is. It's, it's, about, it's about like a, a couple of wet spaghetti noodles, maybe. It's about that much paint. Somewhere between one and two wet spaghetti noodles. You like my food references? Good. Everybody likes food. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Now, the one thing I want to try to urge you to avoid here when we, go, when we put in a happy little mountain, it might be a happy big mountain before we're done. I don't know. We'll see. Mountains kind of grow you know, if, you don't, if you don't watch them real close. But I don't want to put it right in the middle. So if that's the middle of my canvas, I'm just going to kind of come over to the left a little bit. And I want to be a little bit above the middle this way too. So I'm kind of I'm kind of up in this upper left hand area somewhere. And you just come up and you kind of pick a spot and think where would this look good? Maybe right there. Put your knife down. Give it a little drag down to the left. Unsavable. Bob, why do you do that? It looks so good. You just kind of make a, you just sort of make a big triangle and mess up the top a little bit. That's all there is to it. And you can use a pretty firm pressure. You might have to, uh, I just happen to think, you might have to grab onto your easel while you do it so you can put some pressure on it. I'd just sort of grab hold of the top edge. And really, really, that's a good noise to use if you can. There you go. And it works the same way. If you're left-handed, if you are left-handed, this works just as well. This works just as well. You'll load, you'll load the opposite side of your knife. You'll load that side of your knife. And you, can, and you can put your knife down and drag it that way. Works, works just as well. Left-handed or right-handed, doesn't matter. But I, I am going to grab another little roll of paint. Another little roll of paint, and I'm going to come up to this side. That, that made the left side of my mountain. I'm now going to come up here. And touch, touch, touch. And I'm just going to build the right side of the mountain up in little sections. You see how I'm doing that? I just kind of overlap, 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 overlap. Build it up in little sections. And I'm kind of coming back and 
scraping away all of that excess paint. I don't know if you can hear how hard I'm scraping the canvas, but I'm definitely scraping it. Well, it got quiet in here all of a sudden. <laughs> well, while, you're, while you're focusing, I'll put my stuff down so I don't, I don't run away and give you too much to do at one time. Can you believe Bob did these in like 24 minutes? <laughs> Shazam. But while you're, while you're concentrating, I'm just going to throw this up here and remind you one more time. If you're, if you're posting your, your, your painting, if you're sharing it with the world, each little step, if you, wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind tagging it, paint like Bob, I'll love you forever. We want to be able to go back and see what you're doing. We want to, we want to kind of live vicariously through you. <laughs> we, want to, we want to save the memories and treasure them. So if you, if you wouldn't care to do a paint like Bob on your, on your post, we'd love you for it. And everybody knows about the shipping, right? Everybody knows about that little envelope that was tucked in behind your canvas. If, if, you, if you happen to miss that, if you can't take your painting with you today, of course, we'll, we, we want you to take it with you and show it off, absolutely. So if you can take it with you, do that. We don't, we don't want to separate you from it. But if you can't and you'd like us to ship it to you, take that little envelope out of the back of your canvas and just fill out your shipping information, stick $8 in there if it's domestic shipping, and we'll send it to you. If it's international, stick $20 in there, and we'll ship it to you when it's dry. You won't have to worry about it. We'll take care of it. Okay, I'll stop talking. I'm going to paint a little more. I'm going to give this mountain an, an, another little peak. I feel like it needs another little peak over here. So it's shorter though. It's, it's not as tall as the first peak. I'm just going to put my knife down again, use a lot of pressure, kind of drag it over and in. Just make a little triangle, kind of with a blunt top. And then I'll, I'll make a little right side that comes out like that. Here we go. You can make noises too. You don't have to be quiet. You can make up your own noises. You don't have to use mine. Your noise might work better than my noise. I'm going to put just a little baby peak on that side. That's good enough. But one thing I, I do want you to do is really scrape away all of the excess paint. Hear me zipping in there? Don't mess up your clean, pretty top edge. That's all we're worried about is that nice top edge. You've seen Bob say, we could care less about what's going on in here. And we could. We don't, we're not worried about that right now. Just scrape away all of that excess paint. You can just wipe it off on your palette if you want. We might use it again later. Who knows? Now, once, once this is down to almost bare canvas where there's very, very little paint on there, I'm going to sneak up here with my large brush. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of drop the handle down like this so I can see the top edge of my brush. I want to know where the top edge of that brush is at all times. And I'm going to sneak up on the, on the edge of the mountain, but I'm not going to go past it. I don't want to mess up that clean, pretty top edge. So I'm going to sneak up on it, and then I'm going to sweep that paint. I'm going to grab it and pull it out like that. Grab it and pull it. And you just kind of follow the angle of your mountain that you painted in there. See, you just, it's just like going down a slide. And, we, and that liquid white that you put on your canvas when we started makes the canvas wet so we can grab that paint and it will move. If we didn't have liquid white, we'd be, we'd be in the middle of Agony City right now. Feels bad, man. <laughs> it worked. Woo! See, it works. It works. It's not magic. Anybody can do this. And the more you do it, the easier it gets, the more fun it becomes. I'm just here to get you hooked on it, really. I'm like the pusher, man. I'm here to push paint on you. It's fun. It's fun. Wipe your brush out real good when you're done with that. And just lay it off to the side. We'll use it again later for something. I don't know what. We'll find something to use it for. But do, do wipe it out good. And once again, I don't want, I don't want chat to get bored, so I'm going to wash the brush while you, while you guys are finishing your mountain. I know what, I'm, no, I'm no sucker. I know why people watch these streams. So does everybody know that, that we have, like one of, one of us certified instructors is on Friday nights? We do a live hour on the Bob Ross Twitch channel. So come, come check us out. It's at eight, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. I think that's right. Yes, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Every Friday, one of us is on there painting happy little trees and beating the devil out of it. Ten of ten. Paper towels coming, paper towels coming. <laughs> the, pa the paper towel people like us. They love Bob. <laughs> What well, really works great, though, and it cuts down on the number of paper towels that you, if you paint at home, I just keep like, if you've got like a, an old towel, an old cotton towel that's like got holes in it and you're going to pitch it out, save that. That's the best paint rag ever. You can use it over and over and over and over and over. They're real absorbent. It's good. It's good, good for the planet, too. Let me, let me show you something. While you're wiping your brush out and finishing your little mountain, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see about putting some snow on the mountain. This will save it. This will save it. You, okay, and this step, though, we really, like, dug into the paint. We really went in there and scraped away all the excess paint, used a lot of pressure. We, used, we were 10 of 10 on pressure. We're going to come down to, like, 0.5 of 10. Okay, this is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. 
I'm going to take some titanium white, some TW, and it's TW only. There's no, there's no liquid white in this at all. This is thick, solid white. But I'm going to smash it out nice and flat on my palette. And, and once again, just cut through it, cut across, and it puts a nice, even roll of paint on the edge of your knife. If you're having trouble making that work, if you're having trouble loading your knife that way, let me show you another way to do it. You can smash it out flat like this, and you can just sort of lay your knife over to the side here and gather your paint that way. Both ways work, it does the same thing. That, just, that way you can see what you're doing, but either way works. I just do it that way because that's how Bob did it. You know, I wanna do it like Bob did. But both ways work. And I, tr I try to just, if I can help it, I'd, I'd, one thing I won't do, the one thing I will not do on this step is put my finger on the blade. I know it feels really natural to do that. Don't do it. Don't do it. That will, that's, like, that's like pressing the button to go to Agony City. I'm, I'm just going to grab the knife down here on the neck of the knife like this. And I'm just going to try to hold it with three fingers if I can. So I can't put a lot of pressure on it that way. And I'll come up and I'll just sort of match up the peak of the knife with the peak of the mountain. You'll feel the paint sort of grab. And then you just very, very gently, 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 gently. You just drag your knife down the mountain. But don't put any pressure on it. Don't put any pressure on it. Bob says, pretend you're a whisper, just floating across the mountain. And that's exactly what you want to do. You're a whisper. Make little sound effects, please. It helps. It really does help. It really does help. That's not, that's not a bunch of bunk. Bob's, Bob's for real. And I'm going to do this on all of these peaks. I'm just going to match my knife up there to the top. And I just sort of drag it along. Shh. Let it fall down. Do you, want to, do you want to know my trade secret for how to do that? Say, 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 this, is my, say this is my painting here. And it's, it's up and down flat. There we go. You don't want to hold your... There we go. Let's get over here in the picture where you can see. <laughs> you don't want to hold your knife real, real flat against your painting. I'm going to take the handle. Watch what I do here. Sim, so I'm going to raise the handle out like that. I'm going to raise the handle out like that. And then put it down. And use, and use more of the edge of the knife. See, so I'm going to put it down like this, but the handle's kicked out here a little bit. Put it down, and then you can make like a little narrow a little narrow section and you can kind of control how much paint's coming off of there. You'll have a, you'll have a little more control. It's still, it's still a little bit up to chance. But just follow, follow the angle of your mountain, whatever this outside shape suggests. You're just going to come in there and follow that little angle and just keep stacking those strokes on top of one another and working your way down. And I'm trying, if I can help it, I'm trying to keep all of, my, all of my highlights over here on the right side of the mountain. And we'll put a different color over here on the left side of the mountain for the snow that's all in shadow. But light as a feather, light as a feather. Try to, try to pretend your hand and your arm are just weak and it's all you can do to raise that knife up and pull it up to the canvas and just barely get it on there and and just drag it, drag it, drag it. Kind of, it's kind of helpful, I think, if you sort of let your hand just kind of just sort of jerk along like that, just sort of bounce a little. And I might, I might come back here in the background and put just a little dab, just a little bit on that little peak back there. Maybe there's just a little bit showing, not very much. Not very much. But 
We'll call that good. We'll call that good. Some areas might be filled in a little bit more. Some areas are going to break apart. Just, just kind of let it happen. Let the canvas take what it wants and it'll give you back what's left. Don't try to force it to take any paint. Just kind of get in and get out. <laughs> get in and get out before the canvas knows you're in there because it'll get you if, if you if it knows you're in there. We're still having fun? Woo! All right. If you, happen, if you happen to be coming close to running out of some, some color of paint, let, let, let one of these friendly people know and they're going to come help you. They're going to they're gonna give you a refill. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to use some white. On the, uh, on the opposite side of the mountain, I'm going give to you, give you something to think about here. I'm going to use, I don't know, maybe this is a Hershey Kiss of, of white. Well, no, it's not that much. It's, it's, it's more like a peanut M&M, I guess. It's mostly white. <laughs> I'm going to call that a peanut M&M. It's a generous peanut M&M. And I'm going to add to it just a little bit of phthalo blue. A little bit. This is like half a tic tac. A, a, big, a big peanut M&M of white and like half a tic tac of phthalo blue. It's so strong. It's so strong. And I'm going to mix it to a marbled appearance. I'm not going to mix it and mix it and mix it and mix it till it turns to one flat solid color. I want to leave little streaks of the, of the white and the blue showing. So I didn't mix it real well. I just picked it up and turned it over maybe three times. That was plenty. That was plenty. And if I cut through that and get a little roll of paint, I can, I can come up to the opposite side, the really, really dark side of my mountain. And this time, I'm going to touch and let this paint come down the mountain this way. And put a little shadow behind that peak. If you've got a little, if you've got a little tight spot that you can't get into with that great big blade on your knife. If you have a tight spot that you can't get into. You can use this little edge, this tiny little edge out on the end, and load it with paint. You've got, a big, you've got a big blade and a small blade on the same knife, and you can just sneak a little bit of that light shadowed snow in behind this peak and let it drift down the mountain same way. Gentle, gentle, gentle touch. That's the gentlest thing you can imagine. Just a little.
But it's, it's that little light blue shadow that makes your peak sort of stand up and stand out away from the mountain. It's what makes it an individual. And I, and I know you've probably heard Bob talk about, you know, sometimes he'll come on the show and he'll say, you have the power to move mountains. And he's not joking. What he's talking about is like, say we want to take this peak and really push it behind the major peak. I'm just going to take my shadow color and drag it down this side of the mountain and I'm going to cut distinctly through, right through that little peak and it's going to push it into the background just like that. Still using that real, real light, gentle touch. Softest thing you can imagine. Got any, if you've got any weird looking little edges, you can, you can come back and kind of clean them up after the fact. Make them look just like you want them. And then we'll set the knife down after that and give it a rest because we really used it a lot on that step. This paint down here still looks sort of chunky, doesn't it? See how distinct that is still? Normally, if you're, looking, if you're looking at a mountain off in the distance and you look at the top, it's real crisp and clear and pretty at the top. And as it comes down, it gets kind of foggy and distorted at the bottom. So what I want to do down here is just take my, my large brush and again, really, really gently, and I'm going to kind of follow the angles in the mountain on both sides, very, very gently. I'm just going to tap it. I'm going to tap it like you tap a baby's cheek. Just so soft. And then you can, and you can give it a little, a little whisper, whisper blend like this. Isn't that a great analogy? I can't take credit for that one. I have to give, that was my instructor. His name's Doug. He came up with that. He's brilliant. I just work here. I'm just going to sweep it. See how it softens it down? It's not so harsh now, is it? It's like there's a little bit of mist down there at the bottom. That's what I want. Just a little bit of mist. Soft.
Let me ask you, do you still have some of this left over? Do you still have a little bit of this, that mountain color we mixed together, that real, real dark purple? Have you, have you guys still got some of that? Okay. Why don't we, why don't we do this? After, once, you, once you got mist, once you got some mist, once you got some mist, I'm going to take my large, my big old brush. I'm going to take my large brush and I'm just going to sort of pounce it. I'm going to pounce it into that purplish color. Sort of tap, tap, tap. I'm going to tap and even kind of scoot the brush forward into the color like that. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up some of that purple and I think I'm going to pick up some sap green. I'm just going to pick up a little sap green on the brush and bring it down here to the purple. So I've got sap green and some of that purple color. Tap, tap, tap. Sap green, some of that purple color. Tap, tap, tap. And if you tap and you sort of push it, if you sort of scoot the bristles forward, do you see that little ridge of paint that's, that's forming on my palette? Maybe if I hold it. Ooh, there you can see it. I know that's bright. I'm sorry. But if you, if you sort of scoot that paint forward and just plow it up, you'll have that same little ridge of paint on the end of your brush. And I can take that, see that mountain looks really close right now, but if we come in front of this and tap, 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 some little foothills in front of it, it kind of pushes it back into the background. Got to make the noises or it doesn't work. Bob taught me that. And you just kind of let it meander up and down a little bit. Just let it meander up and down a little bit so it's not perfectly flat. Put a little foothill in front of it like that. And I'm going to tap a little bit of... I'm going to tap a little bit of body underneath it. Fill it in a little bit so there's some happy little trees on that foothill far away. We'll paint a happy little tree here in a minute. I oh, know it's, it's rolled into the happy little tree. We're going to make a big happy little tree. You just painted a huge big mountain peak. How much of a bravery test do you want? <laughs> Are you feeling brave? Yes. I'm feeling pretty brave too. We'll go for it in just a minute. We gotta, we gotta do like Bob's favorite thing first, though, and that's make reflections. We gotta make some reflections underneath this little foothill I'm tapping in. Tap, 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 tap. See, I'm, I'm gonna come back underneath. I'm gonna come back underneath this and just take some of that dark color that's on my brush and sweep it down and sweep it down. Pull some of that color down into the water. Sweep, 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 sweep. Sweep, 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 sweep. And again, I'm going, to wipe, I'm going to wipe the brush out. I'm going to get rid of the excess color as much of the, as much of the excess color as I can. It doesn't need to be real, real, real clean. As long as you use a light touch when you're blending, it doesn't need to be real, real clean. You can get away with a lot there. Just going to wipe out, wipe out all the paint that I can get out. And then very, very, very gently... Again, I'm using like two hairs and some air. I'm just going to sweep across those reflections and I'm going to blur them a little bit. So it feels like the water's sort of shimmering and moving around.
This is, this is the, the, as many faces of concentration as I've ever seen in my life all at one time. You guys are so intense. Like, I don't see any what faces though, so we're okay. <laughs> I see one. <laughs> You remember Liquid White? You remember your friend Liquid White? It's in the plate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab just a little touch of that Liquid White with my knife, and I'm gonna put it out on the palate. And I'm just gonna sort of spin it out flat, or mash it out flat. Whatever you got room to do there. Bob kind of spins it out flat. Spin it out real thin. I'm going to take the knife and I'm going to cut off a tiny little roll of liquid white. It's so tiny you'll, be, you'll barely be able to see it. It's just, a little, it's just a tiny little portion, a tiny little helping of liquid white. I'm going to come to this area in between the foothills and the water where they meet and I'm going to keep my knife blade level. I'm going to keep it level, and I'm just going to saw it back and forth. And by saw it, I literally mean I'm going to saw it. I'm going to pretend I'm trying to cut through the fabric. Just, just scooch it back and forth like that. And it's going to put a little bit of a water ripple between the foothills and your little lake or river, whatever, whatever it is in your world. It can be whatever you want it to be. Mine's going to be a, a lake. That's the happy little alert noise. Somebody sent you a message. You'll be doing that all day long. People are going to be like, what's wrong with you? So this, this next step really needs no introduction. I'm just, I'm going to grab a fan brush and you can kind of, you can kind of take a peek at me. And I'm going to pick up some black, some midnight black and some sap green. And I'm going to pick up a lot of paint, midnight black and sap green. I'm going to load both sides of my fan brush really generously with midnight black and sap green. Lots of paint, lots of paint, but nice and smooth, and it's loaded to a chiseled edge. Loaded to a chiseled edge like this. And I'm going to say, in my world, there lives a happy little tree, and he lives right there. He certainly does now. That's where he is. I just I turn my turn my brush up in the air like that. Use the top top half of the brush just to tap in a little. That's where the tree trunk is. That's the middle of the, of your tree. It's right there.
This is also your bravery test because he lives right out in front. He's going to be a big tree. He grew up to be a big, strong tree. So what I'll do, take that brush handle and I'm going to crank it over to the right so the corner can be the first thing to touch. Instead of the middle of the brush, I'm just going to take the brush handle and tip it over here. And I'm going to let it kind of drop down too. It's also going to be kind of hanging down like this. And I'll start right in the middle. I'm going to just sort of straddle the trunk line there. Put three or four little marks close together there like that. And then I'll start walking to the left, down the stairs, and to the right, down the stairs. Left, down the stairs, right, walk down the stairs. Middle, down to the left, walk down the stairs. Middle, down the right, walk down the stairs. Middle, down to the left. Middle, down to the right. You're kind of making a Z pattern. You remember Bob talking about making little Z trees? That's what these are. Happy little trees are just little Z trees. You're making a little Z pattern. Just midnight black and sap green. Middle out to the left. Middle out to the right. Middle out to the left middle out to the right. I'm using more and more and more pressure on the brush as I come down the tree. I start out with a real, real gentle touch. Real, real gentle touch. And let it walk down, walk down, walk down, walk down. There we go. Something like that. Something like that. You can give him a little friend if you want. Every little tree needs a friend. I'm going to make his friend like literally little. He's not very tall. Maybe it's just a baby tree. <laughs> but it's made, it's made the same way. You just come right down the middle a tiny little touch to start, and then you start working from the left, out to the right, back to the left, back to the right, making little Z's. <laughs> and, you don't, and you don't have to paint, just because I put two in, if you've got like this beautiful little snow thing that happened there on your mountain, don't, don't kill it just because I put a tree there. You, ma you make your own decisions. Your tree can live over here if you want. You can put, it, you can put your little tree wherever you want to put it. It's your world. You get to do what you want in your world. There's a husky in the house, raise his hand. There's a husky. That's that's nothing dirty, is it? No. Okay. I was I was just told to ask if there's a husky in the house to raise your hand. <laughs> I thought I might be having a trick played on me.
Well, you, well, we're, well, we're in tree territory here. Let's take our, let's take our, our palette knife. And I'm, there's no paint. There's no paint on this knife. I'm just going to come in here and put the palette knife straight into the canvas, and I'm going to sort of saw up and down through the, through the middle of the tree. I'm going to make a real distinct little top. It'll kind of help straighten your tree up. If it needs any straightening, it might not. It might be just fine like it is. And I also want to take just a little touch of white, titanium white. This is the thick white. I want to take a little touch of titanium white and just, a, and just a little bit, just a tiny little dab of Van Dyke Brown. Mix those two together to a marbled appearance. I'm not going to mix them too thoroughly. And I'm going to cut off my little roll of paint once again, just like we've been doing all day long with the knife. This is just titanium white, a little, a little dot of Van Dyke Brown in there. I'm just going to, ooh, just indicate a little bit of a tree trunk standing up here in these little trees. Just touch here and there because you won't see the whole tree trunk. You won't see the whole tree trunk. Just when you when you go to put that when you go to put that tree trunk in there, really think about kind of holding your knife in your fingertips as much as you can. That way you can get in there close to the uh, close to the canvas. All of, all of your paint is on the side of your knife. If you try to hold the knife straight in and paint, it'll just remove paint because all of your paint's over on the side. You kind of have to lay your knife over like this. So. If you can hold it in your fingertips, that helps so, so much. It sort of feels natural to want to hold it like this, but it's really, really hard to paint with it that way. It works a lot better if you can hold the knife in your fingertips. That's the Bob way. I was, I was kind of wiping my fan brush out there just a second ago. I didn't tell you, but I am. I snuck that in there on you. I'm just, I'm just wiping out the fan brush. There's still a little bit of that green, dark green stain in the brush. With, that, with some of that dark green, that green and, and uh, midnight black, there's a little bit of that still in the brush. I'm just going to come up to the cadmium yellow and kind of wipe my brush through there, and it's going to turn green. What green you have left in your brush is going to mix with the cadmium yellow, and it will turn to a nice light green. Just load up both sides of your brush nice and full. And I'm going to come back to my trees. We sort of lose them against the foothill, but watch this. This will bring them back like every other branch, maybe every other branch. I'm just going to sprinkle sort of through the middle and off to the right side. Reload it as often as you need to. If you just sort of touch the middle and off to the right side, I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on my, on my happy little tree there, make it real happy. A little bit on this one too, same way. Just sprinkle a little bit of highlight in there. Those are all the little branches that are coming out at you. They're reaching out at you. That's what, that's what those are. That's what, that's what gives your tree form and shape. But oh, if you do anything, please, please, please don't cover up all your dark. See those little dark pockets in between? Leave some of those showing. If you highlight every little branch, it'll just turn into a flat neon green tree. It won't look right. Leave some of that dark showing.
There's so much suspense up here. Like, I can't see anything you're doing. <laughs> I've got to wait till the very end so you can hold them up. It's kind of exciting, though. That's kind of exciting. I'd rather it be that way. Oh, my gosh. Really? Have you done this before? You've never done this before? Gosh. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'll tell you what. Let me, let me show you. This is the last thing you've got to do to your painting. Let me show you this. I'm going to take some of that dark. Have you all enjoyed this? Yeah? Awesome. Can I just tell you, I love you all for coming. This is, I look forward to this every year. This is like my favorite thing ever. So I've got a little sap green and black. I'm going back to my big uh, one inch brush. I'm just going to tap, 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 tap into the paint, push up a little bit, a little ridge of paint on the palette. We're going to come up here and kind of meet the bottom of the trees. That's their foot. And I'm going to tap, 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 tap a little bit of grass down here in front. Just let it sort of drip, dribble off the bottom edge. Yeah, shh, works too. I'm not picky on the noises. Use the ones you like. By now, you know which noises work for you. That's my favorite. I use that one the most. I've just got uh, midnight black and sap green. I, I might I might have touched a little bit of blue too. You can you can throw a little blue in there if you want, just to sort of just to sort of cool it off. As long as it's dark, really, <laughs> it'll work. You can even put a little Van Dyke brown. If you have a, an excess of Van Dyke brown left, Van Dyke brown and sap green work really well. And Van Dyke brown and phthalo blue work very well for a dark, a dark sort of grassy color, something like that. This, the grass looks really nice. You can leave it dark and silhouetted like that. I really like to take like some liquid white and yellow and this is just this is in a dirty brush this is in a dirty brush you can tap 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 into that too and watch what happens if you just kiss a little bit of highlight on your on your grass see that sort of sparkles it and if you gently gently tap and follow the lay of the land sort of down into the left tap 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 a little more just a real gentle touch a lot of paint a lot of paint and a light little touch and you'll get real lacy looking grass it's nice and nice and loose and airy it's pretty 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 and a lot of time Bob takes the tip of the knife and just scratches in little sticks and twigs in the shadows that's that's kind of a neat thing to add some a little extra you know a little extra pop of detail right there at the end. You can just sort of sc scrape some paint away and it looks, it looks good. And, and finally, um, this is what that little cup of paint thinner is for. You can take your little script liner brush and, and swish it around in the thinner. Especially if it's new, swish it around in the thinner good. It's got some sizing in there to keep it nice and clean for shipping, but... Swish it, swish it around in uh, some paint thinner. I'm going to use bright red. Bob always signed his paintings in bright red, so I like to follow suit and do the same thing. But I just roll the, uh, I just roll the handle of the brush. I sort of roll it around in my fingertips and gather up, gather up some paint 
and I'm going to put my signature down here on the bottom left. You sign your painting anywhere you'd like. But thin down your paint just as thin as ink, just as thin as ink. And you can write your name or, or if you'd rather, if you'd rather, you know, sign it later when we ship it to you and it's nice and dry. You can just take a little marker and sign your name if you want, if you, if you don't want to do the script liner. And I like to put, uh, on the end of my signature, I like to put a little bird on there in memory of Bob. So you can do that too if you'd like. And then this is the mo okay. And this is the moment of truth. Bob calls it. I'm going to take my tape and peel it off, and you got a nice little frame on your painting. And that neat. And thank you all so 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 much for coming to paint with me. I appreciate it so so much. I hope you all had a good time. I got to see your paintings now. Show them to me. Show them to me. Show them to me. When you get a, when you get a minute. Can you get a minute? Oh my God! Yeah, everybody, hold them up, hold them up. I've got to, I've got to make a memory here. I've got to see this. Wow, <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You guys did amazing. Thank you.